Good afternoon. Welcome to our uh, fifth and final Idea to Impact Forum here for the 2015-16 year. We're grateful to have you here and um, grateful to have our panel here who's going to have a very engaging conversation about intellectual property protection. Now, I see a lot of new faces here today, and I'm thrilled to have you here. I thought it might be helpful if I just give you a little bit of a schema on what we've covered so far this year in our previous Idea to Impact forums. In our first session, we talked about the um, innovation process, and is it something we should even be doing here at ECU? And, and the answer was a resounding yes. We heard from, at the highest level um, from the provost and vice chancellor that um, innovation and ideation are activities that we should be engaging in here at ECU, um, not only for the benefit for our, us as individuals in our institution, but also for our region and our state. Our second session, we focused on a, um, a, 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 a sort of an evaluation process, if you will, and if I have an idea or if you have an idea, what do you do with it? Um, many times people think I should run right out and get a patent or start making money. And really, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. So we talked about some of the things you ought to be thinking about to fully assess your idea for its merits. We also talked about um, you might need to get some advice from skilled advisors to kind of tell you, is your idea have merit? Or perhaps you need to advance it in some manner. And sometimes our advisors will be really honest and tell you, your baby's ugly, <laughs> and maybe you should look at something else. So these are some things that we talked about in our first couple sessions. Our last session, we talked about funding. If you have an idea, it's going to take some money, some cash, some capital to advance it in some manner. And we talked about different forms of capital and where you might go to look for that capital. We talked about grants. We talked about um, angel investors. We learned for some people it may be a new term, bootstrapping. How do we do this on our own with our own resources? We learned about venture capital. And we learned about grants that are available both through the institution or to small businesses. So what's of the logical progression of this is now that we have something, maybe an idea or something that we have some merit, and what do we do with it in terms of protecting it? Because um, many times people are actively telling people about their ideas, but perhaps there's a way that we can protect the idea so we can um, kind of have some ownership to it and not give it away. So to promote that conversation, we've got an outstanding panel, I think you'll really agree with me once you hear them talk, of some skilled um, people who've been in the field working in this. So to facilitate our conversation today, we have um, Carlisle Rogers, who is our licensing associate with the Office of Technology Transfer. Um, Following Carlisle, we have Alice Bonin, who is with the patent law firm Myers Beagle, which is located in Raleigh. Um, following Alice, we have uh, Will Cannon, also uh, an attorney with um, the firm Parker Poe in Raleigh. And Will's expertise is in copyright and trademark. And um, he actually manages ECU's trademark portfolio. And to round out our conversation, I've got a good friend and someone I know who will be very lively in the conversation, and that is um, Lee Workman, who's Associate Director of Athletics here at ECU. And his charge, among many things, is um, ECU's trademarks, athletic marks. Now, um, in your brochure on your tables, there's a brief write-up about each of those ind these individuals, so I won't go into more detail about them, but you can read about them in your brochure. Um, before I turn the program over to Carlisle, I just wanted to mention you know, what the format of today's program is going to be like, since we have so many new people. It's the first 30 minutes is basically going to be conversational fireside chat 
among Carlisle and our panelists, our guest panelists. Following that, <clears throat> we'll have a period of Q&A, but because our program is being filmed, what I'd ask you to do is to make notes or write down questions on the little index cards you have on the table in front of you. We've provided pencils for you. Write down those questions, and when it's time for q and I'll ask you to pass your questions on to one of our staff members. We've got Diana Wright back in this corner, and that Lucretia Davis is sitting out in the hallway right now, but she'll be back on this side. And they will pass those questions on to me, and I'll read them on the um, mic so we can pose the questions to the um, panelists. Following our Q&A, I hope that you will stick around if you're able to, because we're going to do some um, table exercises, some uh, small discussions at each of the tables on different forms of intellectual property uh, protection. So we'll give you a chance to kind of test what skills you have in that. So that's a bit of what the format will be today. I think probably I've spoken long enough. So what I'm going to do is turn the program over to Carlisle, and I'm sure you'll have um, an engaging conversation with our panelists. Thank you, Carlisle. Mm -hmm.